Hey folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have the long overdue unboxing and review of the brand new Spectrum DX9 Black Edition radio. Guys, it's a really sweet radio. Uh, I have had this actually for a few months uh, and uh, it came in really just before Joe Nall uh, in May. And uh, I was going to do a review of it then, but I had to set it up to use it for about 10 airplanes like the week before Joe Nall started. So I've flown the heck out of about like I said, about 10 airplanes or so uh, in these memories, and I've had to use it. So I haven't had a chance until now to really sort of film it and show you guys how it works, which is actually good because I have model memories in there now. I've used it a bit, and I can show you guys uh, a little more detail in, in the menus and so forth. So um, I'm pretty much going to switch my entire fleet over to all Spectrum uh, radios, uh, mostly for standardization reasons. I have a DX7 that I use. I have a bunch of other radios, but I'm going to be using the 7 and the 9 for most everything now. Uh, again, mostly because of standardization, and I have found that the Spectrum radios, they are the most standardized. Switches are in really the same places on everything. And uh, even though I've done reviews of other radios, which are still really good radios, the problem I'm finding is, is the switches are in different positions for different brands of radios. And I like the Spectrum best for airplane use, just because I usually use this switch for the flaps, and I use the switch down here for the landing gear. Uh, and uh, on other radios, this switch right here is a, like the one back here is spring loaded, so I can't use it for landing gear. And this switch right here is what I end up using for landing gear. So flying warbirds, a lot of times I end up landing with my airplane, flipping the, the flap switch up, which is right here, so the tail settles. And guess what? It's actually the landing gear switch on a lot of other radios, and I put the landing gear up sometimes when I'm taxiing in, just trying to get that tail on the ground. So. Uh, rather than mess with all these different radios, I'm going to Spectrum. They also have the best flap system menu in the industry, which I'm going to show you in here as we get into this thing. Now again, guys, I've already had this thing out of the box, and uh, I have actually already flown it, so I'm going to show you some of the memories and so forth. Uh, but I put it back in the box just so you can guys kind of see what it looks like new and what it comes with and so forth. All the features are on the back here in different languages, and mostly I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, airplane use and the airplane setup right here. Uh, but it does have helicopter, sailplane, it also has uh, a bunch of quadcopter setups, I believe. So, But anyway, bottom line is, is what comes in this package is the transmitter, a nice decal sheet, instructions, a 2000 milliamp two cell lithium ion battery, and a 12 volt glo glo global power supply, or basically a charger. And I'll show you that in the box. But the airplane setups on this thing are really nice, guys. 10 wing types. Normal, dual aileron, flapper on, one aileron, one flap, which is actually what I end up using most because uh, although it says one flap, all the flaps are usually Y harnessed together, so it's only one flap. That can be deceiving sometimes, but one aileron and two flaps, uh, two ailerons, one flap, two and two, and then elevons, elevon B and uh, four ailerons. So lots of wing types, tail types, normal, V-tail, V-tail A and B, dual elevator, dual rudder, uh, dual rudder and elevator, uh, relative gain adjustment for the AS3X gyros, uh, or, or I should say, stabilizers within the receivers there, the AS3X receivers. Flap delay, which is in the flap menu, which is really nice, and elevator compensation, which is all in that menu, and that's what I'm going to show you because that's one of the key features for airplane use if you guys have airplanes with flaps, which I pretty much mostly do with most of my airplanes. Um, five flight modes, dual rates, and expo, which is really nice, and then 10 programmable mixings, which actually I do use for a lot of stuff. Uh, helicopter features. Um, I haven't flown helicopters in years, but I, I've flown tons of helicopters. So, active gyro trim, seven point throttle curve, pitch curve, tail curve, seven swash plate types. So, uh, normal four point uh, swash plate is what that is uh, 120, 135, three servos set up for 140, uh, three set up for 90, even four servos at 90 each, which is kind of sweet, and then two servos for 1E. So, lots of swash plate types for any kind of helicopter you might have. Uh, swash plate timing, five modes, five flight modes, uh, dual rates and expo, 10 programmable mixers still again yet. Uh, and then of course sail planes, the wing types, you can see all the different types there, V-tails and so forth, uh, flap, delay and ele uh, flap delay and elevator compensation. And then some of the common features on this, voice alerts, which I've used a bit, but for my personal taste I usually you know, cut the voices out, I usually don't like to hear the voices, but that's just me. Uh, 250 model memory, guys, that is what is nice about this without the use of a, of, a, of a memory card, which is nice. All that's already built in. Uh, servo balancing and sequencing, uh, model match to match technology, uh, 
has a range check feature, timer and throttle switch, uh, switch start, which is very good, servo monitor, which is really nice for finding problems and flaws, and then you can, of course, select the language. So anyway, guys, without further delay, let's get this thing out of the box, and we'll take a look at the hardware that comes with this thing. As we get this thing out of the box, we'll open it all up. First thing, really, we see is the uh, sticker package. They give you this nice uh, black and very, very dark gray. Uh, they do this uh, so you can put some of these decals, these DX9 Black Edition decals on your planes and flight boxes and anyone else you want. Again, guys, I have had this out of the box already, so um, but I put it back in just to kind of show you the newness of it and then what comes with it. I think this was actually wrapped in a bag, but you get a very nice... Uh, black edition uh, neck strap that I've actually already pre-measured mine. It says Spectrum all over. So a real nice neck strap that I usually leave in my car, but and that's pretty much primarily what I fly with on my radios. And then, of course, um, a charger here, guys. I already put a label on mine just so uh, I knew which one it was for. And uh, if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty of it, you can see the output is at a half an amp. Okay, 12 volts at a half an amp. And uh, there's other connectors for this thing which you can put on here. So it actually is a true international charger where this comes off. And then if you need to, what there are is there's this international uh, uh, air transmitter adapter kit. So what you do is for different countries, you have all these different uh, adapters here for different uh, types of outlets in different countries. And you slide this off and you slide the appropriate one that you need on for the correct country that you're in. So really nice that they supplied that. Uh, I'm pretty sure right down here, this is an Allen wrench for adjusting some things. Uh, they also give you this, which is an additional, um, I think this is for the battery compartment for a slightly different size battery. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll show you the one that's in there. There's another foam one that's in there and here's basically the radio as it comes out of here and it's a very nice uh, transmitter case. Now I've been using it and I went ahead and I left all of these protectors on here and you can see this one I actually pulled off so you can see how nice it is underneath and as you pull this protective screen off it kind of reveals a really clean really nice finish on everything. Uh, same on this one here I'll go ahead and pull this off so you don't have to leave these uh, you don't have to take these off I actually um, uh, left mine on for a little while because it does help protect it but after a while they get a little dinged up and scratched up and you probably want to take them off at some point. You can see here there's another screen protector on here. So if you think the finish isn't really good on those things, it's because they have this protective wrap over this thing uh, that you can take off uh, of all of them. They're actually on here and here too as well. But very nice uh, radio case overall guys. And then down in here there's a huge, I mean huge instruction manual in here guys. Very thick and you can uh, get into that. You really don't need it, but if you need any specifics, any details, if you can't get it on this man, the manual's actually also online too. Uh, I think it's Spectrum and Horizon, so if you do need to see the uh, menu. But you can see really nice case overall, guys. You can see really nice black sticks. Mine is a little dirty because, yes, I have been using mine a bit, but essentially uh, it is brand new. So very nice adjustable length sticks. Very nice rotary dial here. I went ahead and put my uh, label on here, my phone number, just in case. Mine, get lo mine get lo gets lost or confused with uh, somebody else's uh, radio so they can find me. But really nice antenna cover here. But everything here is a three position switch. Three position here, three position here, here and here. These are all three position switches, these two right here. And then these two are single position. And typically these are best for gear and these two switches are best for flaps depending on whether you're right or left handed. Since this is a mode two radio and I like to fly uh, with the aileron and elevator on this stick, I like to be able to be in the flare or the takeoff and the landing or even gliding in if my engine were to quit and I like to be able to get to my flaps without disrupting my flying hand right here. Get the landing gear and the flaps and that's why I like these two switches for that. I think most pilots uh, like that as well. So there's also a bind button that you can assign to almost anything. Your charge port is down here. Uh, as you flip around here, this is your uh, USB or I'm sorry, your uh, SIM your SD card slot, okay, that uh, you can put your SD card in and out, and that's for transferring model memories and doing uh, system upgrades because you can do software upgrades of this thing online. Uh, and then you flip this thing over again. I've done a little customizing back here. I use a telemetry unit, so I put a little Velcro on here. Another thing I do customize is I actually, not really customize, but I put a bind plug. I wrap it around the, the back end of most of my radio. So if ever I need a bind plug, I always have one sitting on the back here. Uh, rotary switches back here. I know a lot of guys really like rotary switches. I don't use them too much for too many things. You can see back here as well. 
Um, but they're good for uh, certain things and uh, you know, especially if you have like speed brakes or something like that that you need to deploy. Uh, it's easy to get at that with a finger. It gives you a little a, a, a way to reach it around the back, which is kind of really nice. Uh, and then here, there's a couple of uh, uh, rubber um, plugs here and here, and that's for adjusting throttle tensions and stick tensions and things. You can just peel that away. That's all in the manual, and that's stuff I went into the manual look. Uh, a headset uh, adapter there, and uh, this is plugged in for a trainer port as well. You open up the back here, and uh, there's your battery. And you can see that foam block around here, so I'm, I'm kind of speculating that that foam block that we just saw in the box is for maybe a slightly different size battery. But you can see this is just a two cell, um, 7.4 volt uh, transmitter uh, battery. And uh, again, you just charge it through the, uh, the existing charger that comes with this thing. And um, it just uh, charges through that, uh, again, through that side port. But nice rubbery grips here on the side. That's another nice thing. They're very rubbery, very, there's a lot of friction there. So the chances of dropping or slipping with this radio are very slim because they're here and then they're also on the side. This is all a rubber grip around here right where you put your fingers and right where you put your palms everything has nice grip to it so it has a very good feel and again guys for airplane use flaps i usually use this switch right here i use my dual rates my elevator dual rate i actually have on this side so i can adjust that while i'm flying because that's really the most critical flight service on the airplane and then my aileron rate i'll usually have here i'll put a rudder on one of these if i really need it but i don't need the rudder rate rate too much and then, of course, landing your switch I usually use right here. So, again, guys, everything's in the right place, uh, you know, if you're an airplane pilot. Uh, there's also a rotary knob here that you can dial. This I really like to use for my nose wheel steering system. So my nose wheel trims as I'm taxiing out, especially on a paved surface, and the plane's pulling to one side, I'll trim the nose wheel steering with this right here, and I can kind of steer it, get it nice and centered. So everything's just in a nice place, guys. There's also two trim switches right here and right here up and down that you can use, you can assign to, to several functions. So, you know, you go ahead and turn this on, your light comes on to indicate that you're transmitting, your DX9 uh, logo and everything comes up. You can see I have the F7F Tiger Cat in there and so forth, and that was really the first plane uh, I put in there. I customized my name, RC Informer, but guys, you can see right here, just overall really nice uh, radio, uh, just what you get out of the box. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get into some of the menus and show you guys uh, really some of the inside and some of the workings of uh, how this whole system works. To get into your main menu, you really just use the uh, rotary switch here, but instead of rotating it, and it is rubberized so it does have a nice feel to it, uh, instead of rotating it, press it because it's, it's a button as well that lets you select everything. This function list here is where you're going to do almost all of your setup, and primarily you're going to do most of it with servo setup and dual rate. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other menus, and as you rotate this wheel, uh, it gets you to throttle cut, throttle curve, analog, and digital switch setup. Flap system, this is the other one you'll be using mostly if you're an airplane guy like me. These are your flap positions, your, where your elevator is set to those that are elevator to flap mixing, your switch position, or your switch that's selected uh, to operate your flaps, and then of course the speed at which the flaps are moving. So I'll get into that in a little bit more detail here in a minute. And then you're mixing, where you can mix almost anything, and I have uh, rudder to aux 2 mixed in because I have a separate uh, nose wheel uh, steering, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which operates as, uh, with my rudder as a slave. Um, and then there's a sequencer for a gear door sequencer, range test, timer, telemetry, voice setup. Uh, there's tons of stuff, guys, here. VTX. I don't even use most all of this stuff, but for whatever your application is, you got a lot of stuff that you can uh, go to. And then there's system setup here. Monitor we already saw from the front page, so if I move my ailerons, you can see my aileron stick moving, my elevator moving, my uh, rudder here, you can see the rudder moving right here, along with my nose wheel steering, these two, these two, these two right here moving together, and uh, of course all the flaps and gear and all that kind of stuff. But aside from that monitor, back up here, the second to last one is system setup. Now if I click, nah, let me go back to that. If I click on that, I kind of turn the dial. Sometimes you, it's a little cantankerous sometimes using this rotary thing, but it actually works very well most of the time. Uh, but anyway, you press on that, it says caution, confirm. You want to uh, confirm system menu access. It says RF will be disabled, are you sure? 
All that is saying is, is that what you're doing is, is you're going into the system setup and this thing's not going to transmit anymore, which is fine because you want to make some of these adjustments and things while you're not transmitting. So I press yes, that takes me to my system setup menu. So that's model select type, name, aircraft type, all that kind of stuff, telemetry, bit rate, there's a ton of stuff, transfer card, transfer SD card, all that kind of stuff. There is a second way to enter that menu and here's how you do it. You basically just turn the radio off. Okay, so there's two ways to access that. You press and hold, okay, this rotary button and then you turn your switch on. And what it will do is it will go right into your system setup. And the interesting thing to know about that is, is this light right here with these, uh, this spectrum thing uh, is not lit up, okay? That means that thing's not transmitting. It's kind of hard to see there. But when you exit this menu, it goes back in, this lights up. That light is indicating that you are transmitting now. So again, if I were to go back into that thing, go back into that system menu right here, system setup, I click into there to go in there again. It says, are you sure you want to disable? Hit yes. Now it goes in your system. You notice your light goes out here, which means again, you're not transmitting. So again, two ways to get into that uh, system setup menu. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom right down there again, just so we can get kind of close into there and see some of the things. This is basic system setup stuff. And again, that is what you access by going all the way down here at the bottom or turning the switch off, the radio off, and then turning it back on while you're holding this rotary button down. So, but when it comes to the function list, which is where you get to from your primary screen just by pressing it, again, this is where most of your work is gonna be done. So when you're setting up an airplane, uh, I'll go through these menus one at a time and let's just start off with the uh, servo setup. You go through the pressure button and you get to see all the different uh, sections here. Travel, and I'll press this, uh, that's the travel distance of each servo. This is the sub trim of each servo, reverse of each servo, the speed of each servo. And then it gets into ABS travel, which honestly I haven't used and don't understand it. Uh, there's also balance, which again, I, that's something I don't use and don't understand. Mostly you're going to be using travel, sub trim, reverse. Uh, maybe speed a little bit, but mostly these. So if you have to reverse a channel, it's this simple. You just go in here, once the, that reverse is highlighted, you press the button. You go to which one you want to reverse, let's say aileron, you press the button and you reversed it. Now you just back out of the menu and go back to list. So let me put that back so my Tiger Cat is uh, actually uh, rolling in the proper direction when I go and fly it and, uh, and so forth. So uh, that's your servo setup menu basically. So a lot of things you might adjust to. Let's say, uh, let me show you the travel here. If you click on travel for example uh, and you go and you look at some of your sticks as you're doing this kind of stuff. Let's uh, select that and let's go into aileron. You notice with aileron, uh, both of those boxes are lit up right there. So if I make an adjustment, if I press that button and I adjust the travel, I'm increasing the travel of both directions, okay, of uh, the servo, both ways that they're going. Now if I press, if I move my stick, watch what happens to that box. I move the stick, it only highlights the right side. If I move it the other way, it only highlights the left side. So if I rotate this knob, I'm going to adjust disproportionately the distance of travel on one side than I am the other. So when I put it back to the center, both are highlighted. So you have to really be aware of what this radio is doing at any one given time. So you can adjust your travel of your throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, um, uh, landing gear, flaps, and so forth. So uh, if you need that travel adjustment, this is where you go to to do it. But it is very, it depends on the stick position and where you are. So let's press on travel. I'll go to the sub trim. Same thing. Let's, let's, just, let's let you sub trim the center position of the uh, servo and reverse is pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and back on out of here, guys, and we'll go back to uh, the next thing, which is dual rate and expo. As we go into the dual rate and expo uh, menu, we roll to that and we press the button, we can adjust the expo wherever we uh, want. Now, aileron and elevator are the primarily ones that all set up expos or dual rates on and so forth. And for example, I'll go to elevator right here and you can see where my elevator is set up and I assigned it and here's how you assign things on this really kind of cool the way it's done is that uh, you can assign it to a switch now I have right here it says switch C is assigned which is this one right here well let's say you wanted to switch it to maybe this one up here which is uh, that is uh, switch B right there you can see the label for it right there let's say I want to switch that to B and I wanted that right there so uh, here's what you can do you can roll right down there press on the C area okay and then you can just switch your 
button, and it automatically assigns it to the B position, which is kind of nice the way that it uh, the way that it does that. So I want to go back to uh, I want to go back to uh, C though. So let's see, I got that highlighted again. So let me go back to C, and there it is. So um, a couple things that I already have uh, uh, set up in here already, guys. And let me get my uh, little block under here that's uh, allowing me to not do this without having a, uh, uh, a glare on the shield here. Uh, but as we move this thing along, you can see the different switch positions. As I move that C switch, it tells me where, uh, what, what things I have set up and where I have a lot of these things set up. So uh, my low rate for my elevator have 70%, mid rate 85 and high rate at 100%. Those are things I already pre-set up in there. And that is just my dual rate. If I want to adjust the expo of something, meaning non-linear movement of the controls, I have to go down here and press and activate and I can adjust an expo. I don't fly with a lot of expo or sometimes as you can see here, none in my flight controls because I like to really feel what the plane is doing. But that's all personal preference, guys. So you will use this a lot to set up your aileron, your elevator, your uh, rudder, uh, your dual rates and on everything. So again, this is a very much used menu, the, uh, the, uh, the dual rate uh, and expo uh, menu. The next menu to show you is the uh, throttle cut menu. I don't really set anything in there. I have mine inhibited, but you could set that up, activate it, put a, uh, a particular flight motor or assign it to a switch or something. I just don't really have mine cut, set. Some guys like to use it. It's really just personal preference. Next is throttle curve. You can literally adjust all these different points and flight modes and things. But again, I don't really mess with too much of a throttle curve on uh, airplane uses. Analog and digital switch set, uh, uh, switch uh, setups. Again, I don't use it too much. Flap system. Here's where the meat and potatoes of setting an air, uh, a flap system uh, is. And uh, basically, once you get the airplane in a box, you plug everything in, you go ahead and you can adjust the fine endpoints of your flap system. I just happen to have mine at 92%. And as I flip the switch, and I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit here. As I flip my flap switch, what I'm going to kind of get, see if I can get that in the frame there. Uh, as I move that thing, my block moved out again. As I move my switch, you can see that the position switches to one and two. So up is zero, mid flaps, which is take off, usually one. All the way down is two. And you can see I have 92% up, zero in the middle, and then minus 70%. Um, uh, for the for all the way down, and I have it assigned to switch D down there, so pretty straightforward. And then of course, um, let me put that back to 92% before I mess that up. And then uh, as I uh, as you go to the bottom here, you can see here that that adjusts your your speed of your uh, servo. So um, elevator mixing, if you have any up or down elevator mix, which the, the, the actually the Tiger Cat didn't need. A lot of times when you drop the flaps on your airplane or you extend flaps, the airplane will balloon up. It'll tend to pitch up. So you have to put a little down elevator. And that's where you can adjust all of that right there. And all it takes is just moving this rotary around to wherever you need it. So full flaps often, you'll have to put 5 or 10% or something like that. And then you fly it and see how it works. So when you drop your flaps, your, your plane tends to balloon up. But when you drop your flaps to full flaps, you actually program your elevator to move down 10%. So it eliminates that ballooning. So Again, a lot of very fine 1% increment adjustments to your flap system and your elevator to flap mixing uh, and your, your switch and then your speed. I usually put two seconds speed. Two to three seconds seems to be about the right uh, amount of, uh, of flap um, slow down, I guess you could put. The more you put in there, the slower they are. So you can make your flaps really, really slow if you want them to take forever. But about two to three seconds seems to be a good place for, uh, for a flap system uh, slow down. And the next up is the mixing. Ten open mixers in this radio. So you have all the programmable mixing that you could possibly want. Um, what I have set up in mind typically, uh, which if you guys watch any of my videos with a lot of my airplanes, especially planes that have nose wheel steering, I usually have a rudder mix set up where a rudder to aux 2, where, or a rudder to aux I should say. So rudder's my, my, my master. Um, my, uh, my auxiliary uh, is the slave, the, the servos are separate, so I have a servo plugged into aux 2, which is my nose wheel steering servo. And then you have to adjust your rate. The rate is usually both, um, is usually uh, um, minus or it's plus on both of these, so it depends on which way uh, that you're going. But anyway, once you set that up, you get this trim set up, this actually allows me to mix in my nose wheel steering servo with my rudder. 
and, and then assign it um, uh, to a switch. Now I don't really assign it, um, I don't have the, a switch assigned to turn this on and off because I want to leave it on all the time if I were to put it on a switch. It, right now it's in the on position so it stays on all the time. If I were to go to a flight mode or go to inhibit or something, uh, it would adjust that. But I don't want it to do any of that. It's constantly on. So anytime I move my rudder stick, and again, you have a monitor right here that you can see. Anytime I move my rudder stick, I get my rudder movement and I get my aux 2 movement. So, and that means that my rudder is moving and my nose wheel steering is moving. If my nose wheel is steering the wrong way from my rudder, you adjust these boxes, and I can go up here, you adjust these all the way to plus 125 instead of minus 125. That just gives you full movement. Um, and that's how you kind of just set up that mixing. So anyway, lots of open mixers, guys, on this radio. I know I'm kind of talking kind of a little beyond maybe some, some, but, um, but that's, that's, you have 10 open mixers that you can mix anything. Um, it's just amazing how much mixing uh, ability there is here. Landing gear sequencer, I actually have an A sequencer set up here. So I actually have a doors and wheel sequencer in here for the uh, FMS Tiger Cat that I have in there. And, um, and uh, that is something I'm using because it was a test plane and so forth. So uh, range test lets you put this thing into a distance and lets you test the range of the, uh, of the radio. So let's put it into a sort of a test range. Timer, you can go crazy with this timer adjusting uh, whatever you want to adjust here. So uh, you can clear it out. You can go into, there's several pages that this will go to. You can see it'll go to the next page. It'll go into even another page. Um, you can put in tone, sounds, expiration. I mean, there's, it goes beyond. A lot of times I actually don't use a timer so much, but on the first page, you can see it's timer one. The mode is a countdown, okay? And you can adjust that to different things. Stopwatch, inhibit, okay? You can just get rid of it if you don't want it. Countdown timer is what we have it set at. And um, you can also set the time. And then what starts it is the throttle stick. And like we talked about, once you move the throttle to 25%, it starts the timer. And that's where it is right here is over 25% is where the, the timer automatically starts. So you don't have to push a button or anything to get the timer going. So really nice on the timer. Uh, telemetry, guys, I haven't used it yet. So I may get into that a little bit later. Custom voice setup. So you can add a new sound event so you can go into all kinds of uh, different things with this. I don't want to go into it too much. I added a couple sounds before, but you can have things assigned, for example, like gear up. When you hit the flap, when you hit the gear switch, it'll say gear up or flaps up, flaps down. Or so it, it'll put in all kinds of sound effects that you want to put in there. Again, I found that the sound effects bug me a little bit, so I decided not to, uh, not to put them in there. Uh, VTX, uh, again, you can set up a fat shark system in here for uh, for uh, you know doing first person with goggles, uh, a lap timer which you know honestly I don't even I wouldn't even use probably, uh, and then of course your system setup like we talked about getting into there, and then uh, and then your monitor here guys so again this monitors all of your all your channels and everything so um, when we go into system setup uh, this is where there's a lot of things to kind of talk about in here. This is initially where you're going to set up most of your models. And you can see right here, you can see all the models that I've already uh, set up. Mostly, obviously, all FMS stuff, but uh, starting with the Tiger Cat, the A-10, uh, the Super Scorpion, the big red tail, the big Corsair 1700 millimeter, 1400 millimeter P-40, V-8 red tail, uh, Super Easy, yellow P-39 racer, the Voodoo P-51 1100 millimeter, and the Firefly. And I did some other test things here, gear tests. So, and when you're ready to add a model, you just add the model right there. And again, guys, you got 250 model memories built into this, which I don't think any of us are really ever going to get to, but it lets you select the model that you want. So if I want to fly the A-10, I would press on that, and it would say, okay, that's what we've selected. So once I go back to main menu, I press that, it'll reset, it'll start transmitting again. Now I have the FMS A-10. I put a jet in there. Again, you can change that picture and put whatever you, uh, you want in there. But I just put that there because it was a jet and that's all that was there. They didn't have an A-10 picture. It would be nice if somebody would make one. I'll go back to system setup. I'll uh, disable the RF again. I'll reselect an airplane. I'll go back to Tiger Cat again. And then I'll go to uh, main screen again. Now it will reset me back to F7 or the F7F Tiger Cat. And then I'll go back to that menu again. So again, it's kind of a cyclical process. You have to uh, turn the RF off to get into this menu. So that's how you select your particular airplanes. 
model type, airplane, helicopter, quad, glider. I mean, you just select the type that you want. Let's say I want to switch this to a helicopter, and I pressed on that. It says it's going to reset the data if I press yes, which obviously I don't want to do right here. So it will reset that particular model. I'm going to go back to the list, and I'm going to go to the model name. This lets you adjust all of these characters in here, guys. So, um, and you can actually insert a space and spread them apart, or you can take the space out. There's all different functions for that. And when you highlight a block, when you move to a block and you press it, it lets you scroll the wheel and put uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, digits, slashes, question marks, pound signs, whatever you want. Um, a couple of cool features that it does have. Actually, let me go to uh, a place where I got nothing there. Let's go to, uh, let's clear this thing out right now, right here. And let's go here. Let's say you want to insert a space right here. I would click on this and then rotate and say, okay, I want to put a space in there because I want to have something else in between those. This is something I discovered messing with this. Because like I said, there's a lot of detail to this. You can see all the different digits, plus signs, asterisks, whatever. But once you get to, where is it? It's going to show up here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Let's scroll, scroll till I get to it. Hopefully it'll show up here somewhere. Uh, where's that logo at? There's one that adds a space, and then there's one that takes a space out. Hang on. Let me go back this way. And let me see if I can find that thing. Sometimes it's hard to find. But this logo right here, press that, it separates. See, it puts an extra space in there. And then there's another one that lets you put the, lets you take the space out. And this is a nice feature, so you don't have to constantly re-erase and add stuff and, you know, go crazy with it. So uh, let me go ahead and get the one that removes the space. There it is right there. And that takes the space out. So. A lot of functions you can rename. You can name airplanes anything you want, which is really nice. Aircraft type. This you'll use a whole lot as well, too, but this is mostly during the initial setup. Most of the airplanes I fly, even if they have four flaps, just like the uh, F7F uh, Tiger Cat has, it really only has one flap, okay, because they're all Y harnessed together. So um, one aileron and one flap. The ailerons are Y harnessed together, because that's pretty much what you use. It's a little deceiving, but that's just how it works. But here you can add two flaps, which shows two extra servos there, operating two separate flaps. This is two ailerons and one flaps, two ailerons and two flaps. So uh, there's elevons if you only have a delta wing. Uh, let's see, elevon B, which I don't know what that is. Maybe the servo rotation is different, I think. Four ailerons. So again, lots of different wing types. This is normal, just two ailerons. So again, uh, this is dual aileron, flapperon. And uh, again, I'm using one aileron, one flap on the Tiger Cat and most of the FMS airplanes. Tail is the same way. I got a normal tail on the Tiger Cat, straight elevator and rudder. But you can see here you have a V tail A and a V tail B. That's probably for different rotation servos. Dual elevator here. This is uh, dual rudders. This is uh, dual rudders and dual elevators. Maybe you have an F 18 with flying tails and two rudders. So, you know, that's what it's designed for. So, a lot of stuff that you can do here. Again, normal. Um, I'll go to next here. Aircraft options. So, there's gyros, pitch curves throttle modes and stuff, so obviously I don't need any of that stuff in there. F mode is for a flight mode setup, so you can set up flight modes if you like to do that. I don't usually do that, but that's just personal preference, what you like. Uh, again, back to the main menu, uh, spoken flight mode. Honestly, I haven't messed with that, so I guess you could uh, probably test that. Let's see what it does. Flight mode, one. flight mode one. Okay, so that's what it gives you if you switch to a flight mode. Um, so you can go into different modes, okay? So I'm not messing with mine. I'm just kind of going back to the beginning here. Let's go back. That's what I'm going to use the back button for just to get out of this thing. Uh, but anyway, I don't mess with any of that stuff. Uh, channel assign. Uh, you can see what I have assigned. Throttle for throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear is wheels, aux 1 is flaps, aux 2 is my aux 2, which is my nose wheel steering hooked up, uh, mixed in with my rudder. And then I have an AUX-3, which is a, a door sequencer, okay? So again, that's something different I have set up on mine. Uh, each plane can be a little different depending on what you got. Uh, channel input configuration, AUX-3 is door. AUX-2 I have assigned to the rotary knob like I talked about because that's set up for my nose wheel steering. So again, personal preference on all this, guys. You can have many variations of trim setups. Uh, there's trim setups, memory, there's model utilities. There's a lot of stuff in model utilities that you will use a lot of. You can create a new model. You can delete a model. You can copy a model. So I may copy a model. Let's say I copy the Tiger Cat and I put it onto number 10 or 12 or something. 
and I want to have a copy of that model. Let's say I have two Tiger Cats and I'm flying them, so I can copy it over there. Um, you can reset a model and completely data will be reset as you can see here. So uh, if you do need to clear that out, you can do that. Let me go back to model utilities, a few more things here. Uh, you can validate, delete all models, sort the model list. I've actually used this quite a bit. So you can select on one. Let's say I want the Tiger Cat to be somewhere else. So I highlight it and then I move it to where I want it and then press it and it'll put it right there. So you can reorder your model list, which is really nice. I actually just discovered this while I was setting up a while back. Um, and uh, it really uh, helps out to organize your planes, especially if you have a lot of them. Warning, so you can uh, set up throttle is over 10%. It'll give you a warning. And I think, uh, I don't know if that's a voice or, yeah, it lets you set up it as a voice or a vibration or just a voice. Um, I don't really mess again with too much. I more or less try and silence my radio because I don't want it talking to me too much. Uh, telemetry setup lets you do that right here. Uh, Pre-flight setup. I don't even know what that is. I'll get into that at some other point maybe, but I honestly haven't been messed with it, so I probably won't do too much with it. Frame rate. This thing's transmitting at 22 milliseconds. I think it'll do 11 milliseconds, which is even faster, but honestly, with most people's hand-eye coordination, 22 is really all you need. Uh, this is the bind function, so you can put your uh, receiver in bind and bind with this, but you don't really need to use that because right up top here, there is a bind button, and that's pretty much usually how you bind the radio uh, with the receiver. That's all in the instructions, so it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, trainer, you can have a wired trainer, wireless, and uh, trainer alerts. So uh, lots of features there again. Uh, analog switch, digital switch setup. So you can adjust those. Uh, center tone, honestly, I'm not sure what that is. Lots of sound utilities. You can add, select, rename, add a sound. Uh, Let's see if I, let's click on one and see what we get. So you can go into different types of, I mean, there's just so much stuff, guys, it goes beyond. And again, I pretty much like flying quiet, so I don't put too many sounds in there. But if you want to put your sounds in, you can go crazy with this thing. System settings, you can see the username. I put RC Informer on the front page like you saw, uh, just so I can identify mine. Uh, you can adjust the contrast of this thing, so you can you know, raise it, make it darker. It seems like 10 is about right. Backlight, you can change that, okay? You can lower it, make it brighter, however you want. I got mine at 100% because I'm always out in the sun with this thing. You can adjust the mode of this thing and so forth. English, let's see, what's the next page give us? Extra settings, system sounds, uh, the vibration, trim, adjustment, trim, style boxes. Okay, you can adjust those, what those look like. So I have boxed boxes. You can go to boxed arrows, arrows on lines. So again, lots of adjustment, depending on you can inhibit all that together. So you can adjust this thing how you like it. Again, volume controls, let's look at that. Um, you can adjust the telemetry and the warning volumes of each uh, thing. Let's see, let's go to next. So you can see, guys, it's pretty endless. I mean, you get low, low battery, low voltage. Do you want a voice or a vibration? What do you want? Here, let's click test. That's kind of cool. So that's what you get for low battery. If your system idle sits for a while, if, you're, if you're, you have your system for a while, let's see, inactivity, voice vibe, and system idle. It gives you those warnings. You can adjust and change those as much as you want. Again, I don't mess with those things too much. They're nice warnings to have, actually. And then uh, last one here is the transfer SD card, guys. Um, this lets you select an option here. For example, let's say I wanted to transfer some stuff. I wanted to import a model, okay? I will have copied, uh, let's say, a model uh, onto an SD card from some other radio. I put it into my radio and I hit import model. And then it will it'll populate uh, uh, um, a list here of all the different models. So you can, you can put a model onto the card, put it on another radio, or take a, a, a model from another radio, another uh, card, and put it into your radio and select it. So there's a lot of stuff you can do on that transfer menu. But, Anyway, that about sums it up, guys, for the, uh, for the system setup menu. And again, just like I said before, when you go into that menu, uh, this thing is not transmitting. Okay? And once you back out of this thing, which I'm going to do right here, I'm going to go to the main screen, your light comes on right here. Now you're transmitting again. So just be cautious uh, with that thing. And it's not a big deal, really, but there's two ways into it, going all the way to the second from the bottom, where it says system setup right there, and going into that. And again, it turns the, the transmitting off. Uh, or turning the radio off to get into that menu, pressing and holding uh, your rotary uh, selector there, your jaw controller there, and then holding it, and then it goes into 
your system set up. Again, no light. So you go back to the main screen for your main menu and you get that light there. So anyway, guys, that about sums it up for, uh, for this uh, radio. There's a lot of features, as you can see. There's just a ton, ton, ton of features uh, to this radio. And uh, I really like using this thing, guys. It's going to be my primary radio. This is my DX7. They're almost identical with the exception of two extra channels, okay? But uh, it, again, the reason I'm really mostly going over to Spectrum is because of the standardization of the controls, mostly the flaps, the gear switch positions, the flap system menu, and uh, just having it all uh, really standardized and all the switches and everything in the right places, three position switches for all your rates and everything. So just a really sweet radio, guys. Uh, be looking for this one really all the way around at uh, Spectrum, at Horizon Hobby, or really all over the place. Everybody really sells them, but this DX9 is fantastic, and again, I'm running it, um, as you guys can see, uh, already on uh, 10 airplanes. My DX7 actually has, and I'll put this back in, you can see all the airplanes that I do have in there already. Uh, what was it, about 10 or 11 of them or something I set up prior to Joan All. And uh, my DX7 has about 36 models in it, I think, or 40 some odd models in it. So really get a lot of use out of this. I'm liking the way it feels. It's uh, just really versatile. You can do a lot with nine channels over seven. And uh, just an awesome radio, guys. So be looking for this kind of all over the place. Uh, be checking for more reviews, guys. Uh, I'll be putting more things out here on uh, more items uh, as time goes on. Uh, once again, guys, thanks for checking out RC Informer. And as always, we'll see you next time.